Okay, so now that we've established, we hope everybody at State does a fantastic job today. We need to do chemistry, so here we go. The things we're talking about today, guys, sound almost exactly the same. The words for them are bond polarity and molecular polarity. Unfortunately, what we're talking about is drastically different. So you've got to be really careful what the question is actually asking you about which set of rules you're going to use, because they're not the same thing at all. First things first, when we're talking about bond polarity, what we want to know is what are the valence electrons doing? We're trying to figure out changes in electronegativity. So to determine bond polarity, we use differences in electronegativity. This is the same differences in electronegativity that you were working on last unit. So here's the deal. You do not need to memorize all of this electronegativity stuff. What you do need to know, two things and two things only. This is really long, and in chemistry we abbreviate everything that's humanly possible. So we're going to abbreviate that entire phrase, capital delta, which just means triangle, E. N. So difference in electronegativity. The other thing you need to know, you should hopefully already know by looking at the periodic table that fluorine is the most electronegative. That shouldn't be news. If it is news, you need to unmake it news. On the back of your table, so if you'll flip your notes over, you have a chart that looks like this. This is here for you to use today, tomorrow on your lab, and during your review. The only thing I need you to memorize is fluorine. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. It's four. Every other element, hint, hint, hint. If you need that information, I will give it to you in the question. So if I don't give you in the question a negativity value, that must mean you don't actually need it. From here, We've already got in our notes some information about the different kinds of bonds based on electronegativity. This stuff, guys, was in your day one notes. I told you at that point to go and kind of highlight it, know it's there, but now we're going to condense it into one spot. So if I have a difference in electronegativity that is less than 0 0.3, that means I subtract, I get 0 0.3 or less. Then I have a nonpolar covalent bond. Hopefully we remember from day one, what does this mean? Are we sharing electrons equally or unequally? Equally, thank you. Equally. So we have equal electron sharing. If we have between 0.3 up to 1.7. On this lecture day, I think it was James who was helping me out. And when I shared with him, I just gave him the top of my marker, right? I followed directions and I shared, but I shared unequally. This is called a polar covalent bond. Again, hopefully this is not news. This is unequal electron sharing. The last kind of bond polarity that is possible is when my differences in electronegativity are more than 1.7. That means I have an ionic bond. At that point, I'm not sharing electrons, I'm transferring. Oops, let me get a different color. I'm actually moving those electrons from the metals over to the nonmetals. If you prefer this version in pictures, that's what you've got right here. You need to memorize this. These make great multiple guess questions. You have to memorize. If I get a, a difference in EN of 1.5, I have to know that that's polar covalent. That's going to come in super handy on the next thing that we're going to do with this. Do you want to ask me questions yet? Of course not. Today you're silent. Okay. Then some things that we need to do with this. For polar bonds, we can show what's actually happening in the bond. And we can show this with two different pictures. 
So picture number one, let's see here, I'll stick with blue. For picture number one, I can draw the direction of pull. The direction of pull just shows which way are the electrons pulling. So if we say I'm a polar bond, that means electrons on one side must be pulling harder than electrons on another side of my compound. When I draw the direction of pull, I draw that picture pointing towards the more electronegative element. In this picture, to double check where this arrow would go, I would go back to my table, look for hydrogen and chlorine. If you don't want to trust me, go look. If you do trust me, that's fantastic. What happens is I find that chlorine has a bigger electronegativity value than hydrogen. So what I do is draw a line with an arrow pointing towards the chlorine. Then I've got to stake my arrow down. I make it look like a plus sign on the side that's positive. So all of these polar bonds have a positive side and a negative side. The positive side gets the plus. The negative side gets the arrow. The other way that I can illustrate polar bonds is by drawing the partial charge. The partial charge is literally showing me where are more of the electrons. Remember, if I've got a lot of electrons in one place, those are a bunch of negative charges. So I would collect up a negative pole, basically. We'll talk more about poles here in just a sec. When I do this, my positive side, so in this case, the one with less electronegativity gets a plus, And the one with a higher negativity gets a minus. This little shape goes something like this. So kind of like an S that you don't go all the way through and curl him in. Looks also sort of like a musical instrument or a musical note that didn't get colored in at the bottom. You've got a plus and a minus. I'm not overly concerned if they're drawn exactly correctly. Get me in the ballpark. What I am concerned about is that the negative one gets to the negative side or the more electronegative element and the positive one gets to the positive side. I'm going to do one example with you. You're going to do the other example by yourself. Then we're going to have questions and move on to molecular polarity. So a couple of examples. Let me scoot this up real quick. Let's do H and O. Oh. Okay. Bless you. So the first thing I should do, even though I know they're on the polar parts of the notes, I should double check my electronegativity. So I'm going to pop back over to my chart. I'm going to find hydrogen 2.1 and oxygen 3.5. If this was a question on the test, I would give you that information. You don't need to memorize it. So I'm going to go here and say this is 2.1. This is 3.5. The first thing I'm going to do every time is calculate that difference in electronegativity. Shouldn't be too bad. 3.5 minus 2.1. You don't want negative numbers. Put the bigger one first. Doesn't matter which order they go in the compound. I have 1.4. Is that a polar compound? I don't know. Let's go back and see. Y'all are like, today we have no clue. Yes, it is, right? 1.4 fits right here between 0.3 and 1.7. So it is a polar bond. Since it's a polar bond, I should be able to tell which side is positive and which side is negative. I'm going to do it in the same colors that I did the picture. So hydrogen has a smaller electronegativity. That means this side is going to be the positive. So I give a mistake, draw my arrow so I have a plus above my positive side, and the arrow points to the negative side. This means the electrons are getting pulled towards the oxygen. Then I need to go back and draw my partial charges. Because the electrons are getting pulled towards the oxygen, they get a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen will get a partial positive charge. Guys, there's not a specific place where these need to go, but put them close to the elements. If you end up with something that's like up here, I don't know what that means, and I'm going to assume that you don't know what that means either. So when we're drawing them, make sure we get them off to the sides. Okay, you do the other one. Give me like two seconds and I'm going to post it for you. 